Bitter Bush had arrived in Australia at Stockton, New South Wales by 1908, probably via ship's ballast water. Within a few decades, it was proclaimed a noxious weed in the Newcastle area. However, its ability to stabilise sandy soils saw it removed from the noxious weeds list. Decades of sand mining over much of the New South Wales coastline then destabilised coastal dune systems. Trials by the New South Wales Soil Conservation Service during the 1940s proved that yes, bitter bush did indeed grow well in sand. Extensive sowing of seeds subsequently occurred between 1946 and 1968. By 1970, it had become apparent that bitter bush was a weed and soil conservation withdrew its recommendation. It continued to spread. By 1982, it occurred on 60% of the New South Wales coastline and was the dominant species for 220 kilometres. Remapping in 2001 showed a 36% increase over the intervening 20 years, with 80% of the coastline now infested and bitter the dominant species for more than 400 kilometres, despite no new plantings. Bitter bush invades soils from sand to clay and vegetation systems from frontal dunes through to littoral rainforest and even heath covered headlands. It changes the characteristic smooth profile of dunes to one of hummocks and blowouts. The blowouts you see here in the middle distance are about six metres high. The most effective tool in the war against this weed is the splatter gun. This film demonstrates how to use it effectively. Now the splatter gun is basically a modified drench gun for a sheep drenching sheep. But what they've done is they've made a different nozzle here for us. And why we use it is because it's gas powered. So in, in this little pouch here we've got a one litre gas pack. And that's got a regulator on it. It's attached to the gun. And the gun is attached to a reservoir which is contained within this carry pack. Now the reservoir is nominally 5 litres but in fact it holds 6 litres and as you can see it's just a plastic reservoir and at the moment I've got it filled up with water just so that but I don't put the chemical in because I'm transporting it and with some of the chemical we use it's, we have a surfactant in it. There's a little breather valve here so you can end up with some surfactant and some herbicide coming out. So at this stage we've got it filled with water. We're using metsulfurin. If you're spraying metsulfurin on plants you use one gram per 10 litres. The splatter gun gives it a stream of droplets, quite large droplets, and because it has a penetrant and a surfactant on it they stick to the leaves and cover the leaves very well and you don't get any runoff and we use a more concentrated form of the herbicide but we use very little of it per plant. So in this container I'm about to put 5 grams of metsulfurin, 600 grams per kilogram is the concentration. So that is 5 grams of metsulfurin and that's enough to do five, a 5 litre backpack and with a 5 litre backpack we can cover a very big area. If you put it in directly into there sometimes it won't dissolve properly unless you agitate it um, and it can clog up the, the splatter gun. So what I'm going to do is pour this into here and you'll see I've got uh, rubberized gloves when you start to mix herbicides in a liquid form you may get some splashing but you can just use one of these to um, protect your face. So I'm just about to add some water to this. It's got a little top on it, I'll just shake that to make sure it dissolves. Pour the metsulfurin in. When you're splattering you want to be able to see where you, which plants you've done. So we use a, a red dye which is a very concentrated dye and we only use two millilitres per litre roughly. So 
it's it's not a, it's not a uh, critical amount. The other thing we're going to put in is a penetrant surfactant and that helps it stick to the leaves and also helps it penetrate. And that's probably important at the moment because it's been very dry for the last six weeks and in this area where you're getting a lot of salt spray onto the leaves you get a build up of salt on the leaves and so if it, it can be that the plant doesn't absorb the um, the chemical very well so the penetrant makes that much more effective makes the herbicide more effective so again this this is two mils per litre so that's a five mil I'll do it into here so that you can see so there you go it's a fairly small amount And as I'm walking around, that will agitate the, the herbicide. And there we have the mix. We can adjust the amount of herbicide that's um, ejected every time we pull the trigger. And so it goes from 50 millimetres down to, I think, 10 millimetres. I'll, I'll adjust it down to 30 millilitres so that we can demonstrate what that looks like when we're applying it to a plant. 150 millimetres is five of these, so it's one, two, three, four, five. So that's quite a bit. But the good thing about this, the splatter gun, is I can be pretty accurate. If you can see here, you've got the acacia growing and the bitter bush growing. What I do is I walk around just having a look to see if, if there's an area where all I can see is bitu bush and I'm pretty happy that I could hit at this angle all that bitu bush and I probably only need to go 60 mil I reckon so I've got a bit of a breeze blowing but it's not going to blow back so that should kill it we can do you know maybe half a hectare with this in a, in a day and then come back in you know six weeks two months time if there's any of this we've missed we just come back and do them and then we might leave it for a year because the plants themselves are not going to be up and flowering and seeding mm -hmm. so we then just come back and observe what's happened and usually you'll get quite a good coverage of of um, native plants but again the good thing with this is you can go in and if you just see one plant in amongst them you can do that and that's all you need to do to kill that plant so that was about 50 mil I just used there because it's met sulfur and it'll take it'll it'll take six weeks before it's obviously dead it's not even like a hundred percent no coverage. no it's like maybe what, 40 50 percent yep. coverage yep. or if that because this is ten times the concentration and Bitu bush is very susceptible. So to do a large area like this, if you were spraying it, you've got to get up fairly close. But here, Okay, so I'm just going to go up the other side now. And that's pretty well it. So that'll take about six weeks now. Uh, as far as I know, we were the first to use it on Bitu bush, but it was being quite commonly used on Lantana further north. And in fact, that's what it was developed for. But if, with, if you're doing it on Lantana, you use a much stronger concentration. Each one of these that I'm squirting is 45 mil of herbicide. For a little plant like that, you really only need 10, 15 mil squirt. And you can do that two ways. You can adjust this, or you can just pull the trigger very quickly. 
like that. And that'd be enough to get that plant. I might just shoot that little bit as well. And that, that plant should die. And I can just walk up here one pace. And when, I, when I'm looking, I, I, I walk up, I don't just sort of go up and just spray. You will have a good look. Oops. So the tuckeroo here I want to avoid and one here. But all the rest of it's bitu bush. So while I'm here, and it's good to stand a bit away because you can you can get a bit of better spray, yeah. Come back again. You know, if you can yep. keep. So it could work. You know, both both methods could complement each yeah. other. But this is definitely a lot. Well, more. we've been through here. This is probably the third. This will be the third time we've worked through here. This was all bitu bush. Yeah, everything that was open. Impenetrable then. It was. Without you coming in and doing this. Yeah, you couldn't. You couldn't get through here. And you can see there's still the dead bitu bush on the other side here. And. So now we're coming back and we're just hitting those odd ones that we've missed. It's, it's an old one that's been poisoned, there's a young one come up. You could probably get in there and pull that, but if you just come to maybe here, and then just try and get it, there's a the tuckaroo line. behind, so you're going to turn a line, line yeah. there. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I reckon that, that'll get it. That'll get it. Yep, and you could just get that those couple of leaves up there and those few in here. So there's, there's a little, there. little group there, this lot, and there's one up there. So I'll just I'll just show. I'll sure. just show you this one. So what I do with that oh, one. I see, yes. That's what right. that. And then just go okay. like that. Now do I have to stand? Stand the back a little bit there thing. for that one, yep. So originally this whole slope was this high in Bitu bush really? two years ago and it was just a green, if, I'll show you the photos, it was just a green rolling mass of Bitu. 